So what happened to episode 20? Well, unfortunately, because the IPCPR show came along, we ended up shelving episode 20 so we could talk about all the goodies at the IPCPR show and get all that special coverage. Well, now that the IPCPR show is over, here's episode 20, The Lost Episode. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to episode 20. Thank you. 20 yes. of the Calypso Cigar Number Review Podcast. 20. It's a milestone. It is a milestone. This is when we should be giving away the uh, the raffle. <laughs> the raffle that didn't really. But kick we will off. do it. It's going to happen. I've had two people ask me about it this week. Did so we have the happen. question? Is did we have anybody pay for it? Well, no, because I kept put, putting them off. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have like one know. person that paid. That's like no. yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. I win. I didn't want that to happen. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but a uh, couple of corrections from one of the last couple of shows. We said something about Kareem Ab- or Wilt Chamberlain in an airplane, and obviously <laughs> it was Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Abdul-Jabbar, yeah. Duh. We got called out on that yeah. one. And then on a mini-sode that you'll hear, I call uh, Todd Vance. I call him Todd Haley. Todd Haley, of course, is former coach of the Cowboys and uh, head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, and I guess I had that on my mind. I don't know why. Sports. Always and we're dumb. Sports. And because we just are not the sharpest tools in the shed. Well, you know, you made both those mistakes, so. Yeah, but I don't say shagop. <laughs> no, I made the Will Chamberlain's mistake. So <laughs> that was you. That's because I'm not a Well, I didn't guy. catch you. Why didn't I? Yeah, what an idiot. I was too busy wanting to tell that that rug story that I... Yeah, right. Whatever. And as always, we're at the Eclipso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. And you can reach us here at... 972-761-9903. And today we are smoking and we are actually reviewing a cigar today. Yes, we are. And it is well, we the, always uh, do. Yeah, we always do. Yeah. It is. The, well, no, we had that one. Well, we reviewed a bunch. It wasn't yeah. just... Yeah, it was a multiple. This is a yeah. singular... The uh, Perdomo ESV Sungrown. There you go. And a Toro, and I think it's a 6x52. Uh-huh. And I've had this before. You've had it before? It's been a while. Uh-huh. I don't remember anything about it. I think I had it when Matt first got it in. He told me to try one. But The uh, Cold Draw. It's different when I'm working and Matt gives me a cigar and I'm smoking it. I don't pay attention to it, and yeah. I need to quit doing that. I need to, while I'm working, smoke something that I know. Yeah. So that when I can sit down and have time to smoke something, that's when I should be smoking the new stuff. So I really do not remember the cigar at all. Yeah, that makes sense. This is um, cold draw, and it's really um, it's got a little bit of spice and um, just a sweetness to it mm-hmm. that you get with some of those uh, the sun grown stuff. So. Mm-hmm. And I must say, I'm not a sun grown fan uh, in the least. Although I have had a few lately that have made me kind of interested in trying this. We're doing the uh, soft flame Alec Bradley. Yes, lighter. we are. And uh, not to be a downer or anything, but uh, the day we're recording this is uh, Bill Haley. It would have been Bill Haley's birthday. It would have been his 88th birthday, ironically enough, since one of his biggest songs was Rocket 88. Mm-hmm. And Pedro, of course, a good friend of ours, and he works here at the store, helps us out on the weekends. And this was also the 15th year anniversary of my dad passing. So kind of milestone week for our father. So we thought we'd dedicate this uh, show to Bill Haley, Bill Haley mm-hmm. and my dad, James Rankin. Mm-hmm. And there was a funny thing. On Facebook, you know. We'll dedicate to my dad, too, but he's still alive. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Let's just be a dad's show. A dad show, okay. There you go. I love you, dad. <laughs> we love your dad, too. He listens to the show. Yeah, he does. He does. He calls me on stuff. And it was a funny thing, you know, almost everybody in the cigar business follows everybody on Facebook or whatever, and you don't know. I mean, I've heard Jonathan Drew reply to some people that have posted things. And that oh, yeah, sort he replies to me all that. the time. I posted uh, a little thing on Facebook about my dad and... Thanking a lot of the people 15 years ago that helped my family out and showed that I still appreciate what they did during that time. And Nick Perdomo clicked like on it. I thought that was really cool. That means he actually read it and was moved enough to click like. That's cool. So we're doing him the favor today and smoking the Perdomo. It's a good cigar, too. I remember liking it a lot when I had it. So first off, you get that spice and a little bit of an earthiness. Mm-hmm. And it's odd, oddly enough, it's one of those cigars that, to me, the sweetness comes through on the retrohale. Mm-hmm. Which maybe is a sun-grown thing for me, but um, yeah, it's tasty. So we are coming up quickly on the uh, IPCPR show. Yeah, it'll be next week. Yeah, in real time. Mm-hmm. So that's so going to be something. That'll be Matt will be exhausted. Yep, Matt will be going to that, and um, we will not, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but stay tuned because we should have several mini sodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we want to get these things out quickly, more quickly, so that we'll be on top of the curve. Yes, for sure. Ahead of the curve, whatever. and uh, But not trouble with the curve. No, because that was a crap movie. Eh, it was okay. It was crap. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. I tried. Timberlake I sucks. 
Yeah. And, uh, no. But Amy it's Adams like... is cute, and it's hard to dislike anything she's in. Yeah, but she's got the bug eyes. I don't know. Something about her turns me <laughs> off. I don't know what it is. She's cute, but I'm... Eh. You're a dork. I'll take the other chick from The Office more than... Jenna yeah. Fisher. Oh, yeah. Jenna Fisher. Better rack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... Uh, J- Amy Adams has scary ginger eyes. They're just kind of scary. <laughs> like, you know she's going to be crazy at some point. Maybe. You scratch your car up and put, you know... During that time words. of the month? Yeah. <laughs> like, it really bitchy. Or if you dump her, she'll just, you know, destroy your car. She'll be yeah. one of the ones that, like, pickaxes your she'll car. She'll do that Carrie Underwood song about taking yeah, the yeah. Louisville Slugger to your car kind of thing. Exactly. Which, yeah. by the way, that song sucks. And if some chick ever did that to me if I broke up with her, she'd be in jail in a heartbeat. <laughs> and I'd be suing Carrie <laughs> yeah, Underwood. <exactly. laughs> yeah, you gave her this incentive. <laughs> <laughs> you made her do this, bitch. I don't even like or know much country music, but I know that song, and it makes me mad every time I hear it. Mm. So you go to karaoke and chicks sing it, and they think they're so cool, and they're, you know, I'm going to do that. They're kind of like warning their significant other. This right. is what, looking this, at this them, is giving, what's going to happen, the, bud. Giving them the I'm watching you eye yeah, thing, exactly. you know. It's like, great, that's awesome. That's a good way to keep the relationship going mm-hmm. there. Good thinking. <laughs> you got to just go trash with her car while she's in. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, well, you oh threaten me, God, I'm going to do car. it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. That's, I, you know, I don't know, man. Country music has gotten so far off the mark of it's where so it used to be. It's so cookie cutter. It's so... It's not... It, everything's I mean, the it, same. There, I always thought there was, there was a defined difference between pop music, mm-hmm. rock, country, R&B... You know, then rap came along. But now it's like, you know, pop teeters the line between country and pop. It's like, right. you know, a lot of country okay. is pop now. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's not even country. I mean, you listen to country. If you, if you had someone, let's say they were frozen in time and they mm-hmm. woke up now and mm-hmm. you and they were used to Hank Williams, you know, and you uh-huh. put on, this is, a, this is a brand new country song. You put it on for them. They'd be like. They put on a Tim yeah. McGraw song compared yeah. to a Hank Williams like, song. What the hell is that? That's not yeah. country. <laughs> well, you remember in the 80s, it was a big deal. Yeah. And like Kenny Rogers or Dolly Parton or even Ronnie Millsap would have a hit on the pop charts. So like, wow, they crossed over. That mm-hmm. just doesn't happen. Eddie Rabbit. Eddie Rabbit had a few, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was a rare thing back then. It was, yeah. Now you look at the Billboard Top 100 and it's riddled with country artists. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Country's not country anymore. Merle Haggard. Now that's good country right there. Yep. Merle Haggard, like old school Hank Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, Even early Kenny Rogers was very Yeah, early country. Kenny Rogers. Uh, Conway Twitty was a little poppy, but still. Yep. God, I'm trying to think of some well, other Speaking of dads, my dad to. loved Conway Twitty. That was his favorite artist. Conway that Twitty? Was, that yeah. was living at the time. Because Elvis was his favorite, but then it became Conway Twitty when, my, when Elvis died. Hmm. Yeah, it's got a nice flavor to this cigar. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, we both have said before that we're not really sun-grown guys, but... I find myself kind of smoking a few of them now, and I'm starting to like them. I think it's one of those things where your palate you mm-hmm. know, grows and changes. Maybe you start to lean towards one thing or another. I'm not going to go run out and buy a crap ton of them, but um, yeah. this is a good Sun Grown. I like that Alec Bradley Sun Grown. I like um, oh, the VSG is good, even though it's yeah, VSG is you know, good, but it's uh, really mild. And it's but it has a lot of flavor though. Yeah, that's what got me trying some other VS or some other Sun Growns. Mm-hmm. I tripped a customer one day and <laughs> cigar fell. I didn't trip him on purpose, but. Our feet got tangled, and the yeah. scar fell, and it cracked. So I told him to go get another one, and I smoked it. Yeah. Because I've never had one. And it made me decide to start trying some sunburn again. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot out there to try if you haven't tried them yet. If you're just, you know, strictly a Maduro or a Connecticut guy. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, Candela, that's that's pretty far off uh, on the deep end as far as weird stuff that's out there. But even then, some of those are pretty darn good, too. Yeah, that Filthy Hooligan was great. Yeah, I liked the Filthy Hooligan. I smoked the um, uh, Luzione one. Mm-hmm. That was good. Yeah, the White Label Project. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Candela's different. Yeah, there's definitely some... So do you have cigar news for us, Brandon? Um, no, just IPCPR stuff. Okay. Um, really works. just wanted to talk about, like, what was what was coming and what I'm kind of excited about. Uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time on the forums, and um, I nerd. read a lot I'm about... I'm sorry, I didn't say that. Yeah, I'm a nerd, yeah. And I read a lot about, you know, what's what's coming, what people are excited about, what they're looking forward to, what the uh, the hype is versus what's probably going to be good. Right. And, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff to me that, that's uh, that's pretty interesting out there. So I'm looking forward to quite a few. Uh, let me see if I can find this in my email here. For some reason, it doesn't show a scent. And while you're doing that, I will tell everyone that we are pairing with, uh, I've got Maker's Mark, and Brandon has Woodford Reserve, too. Mm-hmm staple bourbons yep delicious in fact 
So there's, you know, as as IPCPR draws near, stuff tends to leak out. And I don't know if it's, you know, people actually doing investigative reporting and finding this information mm-hmm. or if it's just the companies just kind of letting leak, little things out here and there out, to yeah. kind of get people excited. Um, so there's a couple things right off the bat that, that interested me. Um, I'm a big fan of the Atelier line. And uh, they're like an offshoot of Tetuahe. It's mm-hmm. uh, Pete Johnson's brother that does that. Um, so they have an exclusive cigar. For you gave the, me uh, one, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I That's a good one. cigar. That's called the uh, L'Atelier Extension de la Racine. And it's um, basically only going to be available for sale at the show. Okay. So I'll probably have to send Matt with some money because I want a box of those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think and they've can also buy. got a. Hmm? I don't think they sell there. No, I said it's only available to buy at the show. Oh. So I don't know. Oh, for the retailer, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's also going to be a new Maduro version. the dumbest version. thing I've ever said. Of course you can buy it. That's yeah. what you go there. <laughs> That's what they're going there for, to see all the new stuff what you buy. What an idiot. Making your sales for the year, buddy. There's also <laughs> going to be a Maduro version of the that's coming out, and I'm excited about that because I like the Maduro. And then a couple of new surrogates coming out. I gave you one of the surrogates, the yeah. back uh, bone crusher, yeah. which you tried. It was okay. Uh, there's a new one out come called the Animal Cracker. <laughs> I guess it's going to be a, um, wow. a probably a Connecticut version of like, yeah. all the same I'm assuming that they don't really have any information about it. Are they going to be shaped like animals, like the animal crackers actually are? I'm going are? for elephant. I'm okay. thinking elephant's the, the elephant. one smoke. No. Uh, the snake. The giraffe. The snake would just be like a calibra. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the but, giraffe's uh, neck. I'm assuming, because those are all really kind of full-bodied cigars, mm-hmm. that maybe it's the same full-bodied cigar with a Connecticut wrapper, which might be good. So We we'll can only see hope. We can hope that that's what that is. Right. Or it might be cinnamon-flavored cigar. I don't know. Who knows? Animal crackers are kind of cinnamon. Or they're vanilla. Who knows? Whatever. Uh, the other one I'm kind of interested about is the um, the 262 Paradigm and Revere Lanceros. The Paradigm Lancero was already out, and I've had that previously, and I told you to try it. Uh, they're also making well, the, what we called, and they're, they're shipping yeah, us something. they're shipping us some samples, and now they're doing a Revere Lancero, and those are just really delicious. Um, the way blends. he described the Revere, have you had the Revere? I haven't had the Revere yet. No. The way he described it, and I was talking, you know, I kind of put an idea in his head because the way he was describing it, it's an all neck cigar but it's more of the cocoa and leather and uh less spicy and he said it's rare to find that in a in a neck and i said well no the league of number nine is all neck and it's about the same thing and then, although i think it has a couple extra wrappers from somewhere else or mind or whatever mm-hmm. uh but he said yeah you know you're right he said now that i think about it this cigar reminds me of the league of number nine so we'll see yeah if it does that's a good deal but um i like the paradigm 262 Lancero a lot and the thing I like about that company is the guy's real high on uh, Lanceros and Coronas yeah. which you know you and I that's like that's our awesome. favorite sizes awesome. so if they can bring that to the party and get people to start trying these awesome mm-hmm. uh, my father and Tetua here are both hitting their 10 year anniversary mm-hmm. so there's bound to be a 10 year anniversary cigar they haven't officially announced flies. anything I know right that's crazy uh, but they'll probably have something out there for those uh, of course the uh, Oliva Milano Maduro can't wait. Enough said. Yeah. Can't wait. We're looking forward to that. Uh, Romacraft is another brand that um, I've been introduced to through uh, people that I know, friends that I know. Uh, they're great tasting cigars. They don't put bands on their cigars, but they have a lot of really tasty blends. There's a, one called the Cro-Magnon. There's another one called the Aquitaine and the Intemperance. Right. And they're putting out other offshoots of that this year. So I had uh, put in the note for Matt to check out Romacraft because I don't think we you guys carry those yet. No. Never uh, heard the K.A. Kendall. 724 is putting out a new cigar called the spider which okay. i think was supposed to come out last year right but it just kind of went okay and they didn't put it out so maybe this is coming out this year right so that'll be out there again again as well asylum cigars is another cigar brand that uh has been making some waves lately yeah. Uh, yeah. they they i seem to be hearing about it more and more they make ridiculously sized cigars so that's kind of what they're known for but their core line stuff if you get just the asylum 13 or the standard asylum is a really tasty cigar. Is it? Okay. So they're putting out some more core line stuff, and then of course they're putting out ridiculous stuff too. They have like a six by eighty and whatever, but bleh. they have one coming out called the Asylum Straight Jacket, which is you know supposed to be very full flavored. Okay. So I'll give that a try for sure because I yeah. like the full flavored stuff. Um, Crown Heads is another company that's uh, getting real big um, on the underground boutique side of things, and they have uh, a couple of cigars out right now called the Headley Grange and Four Kicks. And both those are great I've cigars. I've had the Headley Greens. It's a good yeah, cigar. Yeah, good cigars. And uh, they have a new line coming out that everybody's buzzing about on the interneb, interwebs uh, called the, uh, the JD Internet. Internet. Interneb. Yeah. Inter- interneb. Interwet? Internipple. Interwet. <laughs> Intersection. Hope, Homosexual. Hopefully, hopefully you're interwet. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, J.D. Howard Reserve is the new line that's coming out. And um, there's a lot of people talking about that, saying that it's going to be fantastical. 
Now, Drew Estate, of course, every year they come out with something new. So Drew Estate's putting out a couple of things. They've got the uh, Kentucky Fire Cured, which we've talked mm-hmm. about before, which yeah. is basically uh, using a, a blend of leaf called Dark Fire, mm-hmm. which is basically uh, cured in uh, Kentucky fire of some sort it's well, like a lot of fire pipe tobacco cured. a lot of pipe tobacco yeah, is fire cured it's fire cured like pipe tobacco they right. put that if you look at the cigar it's it's basically a black speck of mm. you know, junk in the middle of the okay. cigar right and it's supposed to give it a real definitive kind of smoky flavor okay. um, smells like a campfire tastes kind of like barbecue grizzle from what i understand okay. so right. it should be interesting but i've also yeah. heard i mean it's a very strong smell like if you like i smelled it at white at the cats yeah, I mean, well, I smelled it at the Cats event, and it, it does smell like campfire. So it's mm-hmm. it's they say to keep it away from your standard cigars. It's not infused, mm-hmm. but it would be probably affecting yeah, your sense. other cigars yeah. like an infused cigar. And they're not the only people that are putting out a cigar that has that in it. So they've also got another Drew Estate cigar though that's that I just heard about. That's called the Nika Rustica. I've heard about I heard about that before you did. I don't know how, but I, I have yeah, heard of that. It's a semi budget line cigar, like five to uh, five to seven dollar range. Uh, that's supposed to have the flavor profile of a Liga, but at a at a lower price range. Okay. It's also supposed to be very toothy and ugly looking. So, okay. you know, it's going to be a, a real rustic Which cigar. Which I don't mind. I love, we've talked and, about the 777. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. The or, origin <clears throat> size. And it's got, the, and the, the box is really cool. kind of looks like the, the, the Drew Estate, um, what's that one that looks like a, a militia, a black market, kind of okay. looks like that. Like real rustic black well, market looking Dr- box. That's not Drew Estate, that's Alec Bradley. Alec Bradley. That's what I'm, I said. You that? said Drew Estate. Oh, okay. Like the Alec Bradley black market. Yeah, okay. it looks like that box, okay. but it's in. So they're borrowing from each other back and forth, I guess, okay. at this point. But uh, it's a real rustic looking box, and um, I'm always, you know, I'm a legal whore to a degree, so I'll, I'm, I'm down to try that for sure. Uh, the other fire cured cigar that's going to be at IPCPR that's already out to a degree. It's limited out. It's out in limited release right now. Is the Lasia Black and White, uh, mm-hmm. which is the same type of thing. They use that dark fire tobacco. Uh, they have two different cigars. One's white and one's black. Mm-hmm. And the difference is one's Nicaraguan, which is the white. Mm-hmm. And the black is the Dominican. The right. Dominican one's supposed to be a little more full-bodied, whereas the Nicaraguan's supposed to be a little spicier, but not as full-bodied. And reviews on both of them have been positive. I think mm-hmm. the reviews tend to lean more towards the black right. on those. And um, Lucia is, of course, Sam Lucia, who mm-hmm. is the inventor of the nub. Yep. Previously uh, worked for Oliva. Yeah. So, yeah. And there was some falling out there, and, and he's actually said, you know, I think hey, they wrote him a check and said, get you know, yeah, the door and he, hit you. and he didn't work for a while because yeah. there was a clause that he couldn't. So yeah, well, I think he had started something and it failed or something like that, and then mm-hmm. now he's back. But he said there's no hard feelings on it, and you know mm-hmm. it's you know live and learn, and he had a good time over there. Yeah. So hey, he's good to be back, you know. Yeah. And he's uh, 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 Carlos Taranio is making these for him, so mm-hmm. um, that's where they're coming out of. Uh, La Polina is okay. having uh, some new cigars come out. They've got a new Petit uh, Lancero and a Maduro, which I'm so down for to try because those are great cigars. Yeah, the Kill Bill's great. Yeah, Kill Bill, Kill Bill 2, um, the Goldie, also mm-hmm. very good if you haven't had that. Um, so I tell Matt to go nag those guys. Well, we're, we're, time, yeah. we already have a, I think he's got an appointment with La Polina. We're going to be bringing that in. Oh, excellent. And, uh, excellent. More than likely, as a Zion, we've talked about that before, but yep. we haven't got uh, As Zion's another one of the ones I listed. Uh, Room 101 um, he is one of the cigar brand that he hasn't uh, looked at yet, but they have some great tasting cigars. They're also one of those companies that has a lot of really cool marketing, but mm-hmm. beyond the marketing, their cigars actually do taste good. Okay. And they've got some new stuff coming out. Um, cool. So I told him to go over there and just grab some and try them and see what he thinks. Um, Selected Tobacco is a brand that's a real small brand. They make the Atabay. Uh, which is a really tasty uh, Connecticut cigar, but it's also very pricey. Um, I basically just told Matt go grab a few samples for us. And, mm-hmm. You know, don't buy them. Just <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they're they're tasty cigars, but um, you know, they're they're up there in the price. Uh, Iconic Leaf uh, makes the Recluse line, which is um very good cigar, very tasty cigar that you guys I don't think you've heard of yet. You're stirring my arachnophobia because you've mentioned Spider and now you've mentioned Recluse. Yeah, and, and they have. I'm yeah. gonna have Spider dreams tonight. Well, I'm you. giving you those cigars. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Put the band in front of your eye when you wake no, up. You're gonna see it like no, no. no. Yeah. So those are those spiders. are good, tasty cigars, and um, I think that uh, Matt should give those a try. Ezra Zion uh, is the other one that's already you know mm-hmm. being mentioned over there. Uh, there's a couple real small boutiques that have been maybe there a couple of times in the past, but haven't really done anything. But they're finally ready to kind of make a name for themselves. Ezra Zion's one of them. Uh, Iconics the other, and the third one is Viva Republica. Uh, which is a small boutique. Uh, they have a cigar called The Rapture, which is getting a lot of buzz out on the internet right now um, from from people doing reviews on blogs and stuff. Right. But it's it's not a net cigar. It will be in B and M's, but it's okay. a real small boutique cigar. And then I also tell them to check out the uh, Illusione 
uh, Rothschild, which is a budget Illusioni that just has a lot of flavor. Uh, mm. They come in a cab of 30. They're, mm-hmm. they're not pricey at all, and they're really tasty. You know what's really um, good by Illusioni that we haven't talked about, and it flies out of here, is that uh, La Grand mm-hmm. in the, I think it's, I think it's straight up. I don't think it's in the original document series, but uh, mm. it's a Corona uh, with the risotto. Man, that's a good cigar. I don't think I've had that. I think we're out. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so they, they sell. So we are coming to the end of the first third here on the Perdomo ESG. ESG? ES, ESV. ESV, okay. Estate Select so, vintage, vintage, I think. Something like that. We'll, we'll let you know after the break. Mm. But so far, so good. And I was talking for like a straight... 10 minutes there and this thing's still lit mm-hmm. that's a sign of a good cigar that's right a very there. good sign that's awesome yeah, yeah. So, my burn's not exactly right but I don't think I was paying attention to the burn no, when I started it my burn's pretty good man I was talking while I was lighting so it didn't but so far very attention. tasty profile it's got um, a little bit of leather and spice um, it's nice through the nose it's got a clean finish through the nose I like it yep we'll tasty. be right back for the second third Hello, everybody. We're back for Section 2, Podcast 20, 20. 20. <laughs> of the Calypso Cigar Review. And uh, today we are reviewing a Perdomo cigar. Which one is it? The ESV. It stands for Estate Selection Vintage 2002. And this is a sun-grown this cigar. This is a sun-grown. It also comes in a Maduro. Mm-hmm. It might come in a Connecticut. I'm not sure, but we don't carry it in the Connecticut. Hmm. But Brandon can look that up. Mm-hmm. I can. As we speak. But yeah, very good smoke. Uh, it's more medium body, but it still has a lot of flavor. Uh, I think even a, 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 a cigar smoker who's new to the game uh, could enjoy this and not, you know, not yeah, be no, overwhelmed it's not, by it's it. Not yeah. overly, it. It's not really hitting you with the nicotine. It's just got a good flavor to mm-hmm. it. And it is, I would say it's probably medium body, but it is full flavor. There's a lot yeah. going on with yep. the flavor. You know, I'm getting like, you know, spice, a little bit of leather, a little bit of, you know, there's a creaminess to it mm-hmm. still as yeah. well. which is weird for sun Yeah, never, it is. I've never gotten a creaminess out of sun before. But it is. It's, it's, it's got a little, leaves a little creaminess in the mouth, which is yeah. nice. And that might be the booze in addition to that. But Yeah, uh, it's pairing well with this uh, these yeah. two different bourbons mm-hmm. of which we are sampling. So this is a, um, a Nicaraguan um, cigar made at the uh, ter- uh, Perdomo uh, Tabacalaria, whatever the hell they Tabacalara. say. Tabacalara. Tabacalara Perdomo, obviously. Nicaraguan filler and binder. Wrapper is Nicaragua Habano. Hmm. So, yeah. Chocolate wrapper is what this guy says. Huh. I'm not I don't really know that I really get might, a lot Maybe of with the Maduro. Yeah. You probably do with the Maduro. Is this the Maduro that he's talking about? Yeah, it's the Maduro. No, That's yeah. why. Yeah. Okay. I looked up the wrong one. Dork. Jeez. Sun grown. Sun grown. Sun grown. But it uh, it's a nice looking cigar, too. Minimal veins. Yeah, it's really smooth. And it's shiny. Look, and it's shiny. Yeah, it's got a lot of oil. I mean, it's yeah. just really, really shiny. Well put together cigar. The cap was really nicely on there, too. It wasn't like the uh, <laughs> that one cap mishap I had with <laughs> oh, the, yeah. uh, the, one, the, one, the one that was off, it was an ugly looking wrapper. It was the, uh, but it, the, the cigar tastes good. The Gen 2. St. Louis oh, Ray the Gen, Gen 2. 2. That's right. Yeah, you yeah the wrapper f- was like just hanging off from a, it was like right. sticking out on one side. <laughs> it was. It's the, the end of the, the day cap, and the roller, the, cap. the roller didn't put the cap on. Yeah, it wasn't, the, it was not the wrapper. The wrapper was fine. The wrapper never fell apart at all. It was just uh. the cap was like, had this little stick that sticking out of it or so mm-hmm. it, was, it was ugly looking but yeah. yeah it smoked great so i was a, i'm a pretty big you know i i didn't like that cigar the first time i smoked it and i, I became kind of a fan of that cigar. yeah it's, you know for the price range it's a very, yeah it's I mean, a daily it's smoke if you want go to everyday smoke not yeah. bad not bad at all Mm-mm. and you know perdomo is one of those lines that um i didn't i haven't really delved into a whole lot but the ones that i've had save the champagne which i didn't really hit me right, but all the it's, rest it's of the ones mild. I've had have yeah. been great. Yeah, and they had that Habano series where it comes in Connecticut, uh, Maduro, and Corojo, and mm-hmm. those are all excellent. Yep, and you Very have that smoke. little sampler pack that you guys sell like crazy here. Oh, those four packs and the little travel humidor? Yeah. The plastic travel humidor? They fly out of here. I think we're ordering 20 of them every two weeks. Yep, that's a good little pack. There's some good smokes yeah, in there, too. Yeah, four good smokes for like 21 bucks. Mm-hmm. Not bad at all. So, so what yeah, is this, what's the price not, point on this, uh, this particular well, that's, cigar? This, I think it's like, I don't know, I'll, I'll give you a definitive answer next segment, but I think it's in the 825 range. Let's see if I can find that real quick here. So it's like uh, 40 bucks for a five or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for about eight bucks. Yeah, about eight bucks. Okay. That's still not, I mean, I'd, I'd pay eight bucks for this. It's good. Yeah, it's a good cigar. And I'm kind of the same way with Perdome. I don't smoke a lot of it, 
but when I do, I, I like it a lot. You know, uh, once I said the champagne, I'm not crazy about, but it's a good cigar for new people because it's uh, very mild. Yep. And it's a Connecticut wrapper, and it looks nice mm-hmm. in the box. It does. Man, I like the retrohale on that. It's mm-hmm. just it's got it's got a, the right amount of spice, but it's got almost like there's like a little bit of a, a tinge of citrus or something on the retrohale that yeah. I'm getting. Yeah. Okay. So I don't retrohale a lot because I have a real sensitive nose, and if I retrohale too much, I'll sneeze. So uh, I'm just like I don't I'm do like a often. dragon over here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I got this huge nose, so I got to use it for something. So. <laughs> No smoke out of it. Why not? Well, we mentioned in the last segment that uh, we're dedicating the show to our dads. Uh, mine and Pedro's aren't living, but uh, Brandon's is. Mm-hmm. But we can still pay tribute while he's alive. It's important to do that, folks. Pay tribute to your dad even when he's alive. It is, yeah. So we were discussing, well, how did we want to address that situation on this podcast? We thought we would tell some maybe a funny dad story each. And do you have one? Um, I got quite a few. Um, my dad Mine's is- going to go long, so we'll... I'll yeah. do mine second. Okay. My dad was kind of a player growing up um, just because he's, you know, I don't know. I guess he was a, he was a player. I can, we'll say that there's a backup. Reversed it. How okay, do you do so that? It's, it's, it's a, a gift. It's a gift, yeah. That's right. You're a legendary so, voice actor. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> what? Miss Neesmith. Okay, so um, I was kind of this way, too. I grew up as a player, like had a lot of girlfriends, never really had one, had, you know, two or three going at the same time. Yeah. My wife settled me. I think the same thing happened to my dad, but you still have that kind of under the underlaying kind of tiger, you know, right. pouncing one of pounce type thing. Yeah. So when we'd go out places and my dad would take me, you know, I was like the equivalent of a puppy. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah. the girls would come over and go, Oh my God, you have such a cute little son. You know, uh-huh. blah, blah, blah. He's uh-huh. like, yeah. And he would be like, okay, so um, tell him I'm your brother. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And he's like, yeah, just say I'm your brother. I'm like, okay. You know, so we'd get these girls to come over. My dad would be talking to him and stuff. And, He's like, yeah, so you agree with that, right, Brandon? And I'm like, yeah, right, Dad. <laughs> He's already telling him I'm his brother. <laughs> just like busted him. Thanks. Just totally cock my dad, which is great because he didn't be messing around anyway. No, he didn't. You are doing a, a <laughs> doing my mom a service there. Yes, you were. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but we talked about like what, you know, dads bring to the table as far as who you become as a person and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, growing up, I was big into Star Wars and sci-fi and, you know, stuff like that. And my dad kind of grounded me with Westerns. He would mm-hmm. always watch Westerns mm-hmm. every weekend. And uh, I don't know how your family situation was, but we had the living room, which is the room that nobody brought food into. There was like a line you couldn't cross unless you were <laughs> going to sit down and watch television or listen to music. That's all you could do in there was right. watch television or listen to music. No eating. No eating, yeah. And uh, so I would, you know, I was a kid. I was always eating. So I'd sit at the line and just kind of look, try and <laughs> get the right angle to look at the TV to see what he was watching. If he was, eating, if he was watching a you know John Wayne movie, I'd eat real fast so I'd go in there mm-hmm. and sit with him and watch those movies. But, right. You know, that really shaped who I was as a moviegoer, as mm-hmm. a person, you know, because I think yeah. there's a lot of good messages in Westerns yeah. as far as doing the right thing, you know, yeah. being the right guy. You know, yeah, because they had to back then. I mean, yeah. that was, it was do that or die, you know. Yeah, it was, it was, it was morality. It was right. very, they're very much morality plays, as Westerns are. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, you have that grounding as a as a kid, you know, you kind of get that in the back of your mind as, you know, what would John Wayne do in this situation, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I watched a ton of Westerns with my dad and then went to high school, you know, college, did that whole thing and, and really kind of lost that and stopped watching him. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until probably when I was maybe 30 something that I started watching him again because mm-hmm. he would sit there and, you know, I just watched Shane. If you watch Shane a long time, I'm like, nah, I haven't watched that since I was a kid. He's like, you gotta watch it. I'm like, okay. ah, fine. Okay. I'll watch it. I'm like, damn, that was a good movie. Yeah, great movie. Yeah. He hit me up with all. And then I, we started playing that game. We'd go back mm-hmm. and forth, call me. What'd you watch? I'll watch this. Oh yeah. I'll watch that. You know, yeah. just, that's awesome. Yeah. So I always have that connection with him is that in Star Trek. But I think yeah. he watched Star Trek because I was in the Star Wars and he's like, oh, I got to watch something sci-fi. I'll watch Star Trek. Man. So, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Good so, stuff. No more funny stories? Um, no, those are just poignant. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a funny one. And I'll try to – it's hard to edit this story, but I, I'll do it the best I can. There's an old – Mesquite, Texas is a suburb of uh, Richardson. And I grew up in Mesquite and went to Mesquite High School. So shout out to the Skeeters. But – uh I'm not really editing if I'm throwing in extra vignettes. Or, 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 but anyway, there's this road. It's called Holloman Road. It's old, an old abandoned road out in the woods. And uh, there was a horrific murder there in the late 70s that just recently got solved. It was on a couple episodes of Unsolved Mysteries and Cold Case Files and everything. So they've documented this story. Is this an actual story or is this a movie that you made up in your head? No, this actually the- happened. Okay, okay. And uh, they actually solved the murder about two years ago. Even though it happened like in 79. But, you wow. know... 
anytime there's something like that in a small town, legends keep getting grown, you know, grow. And there were rumors that there were satanic cult meetings and sacrifices and stuff out there. Now, that's never been documented, but, uh, you know, the small town mentality, you have to elaborate yeah. on the story. And my brother and I went there one night with a cousin and tried, that was our dare, try to walk the road at night because there's no light and it's scary as crap. Yeah. And sure enough, we're walking it and a bat flew in front of us. So we, we turned around and hauled ass, you know, got, so I was working at this Philly cheesesteak place and all the employees there were teenagers and I was in my early twenties and the owner of the store was in his late twenties and he wanted to play a prank on him. So I told him about that. And I said, I would get my dad to go hide out in the woods in a Jason mask and we'll all go walk the road, and then my dad will jump out in a Jason mask and just scare the crap out of him. Now, my dad was about 5'11", 300 pounds. A uh, little fat, but mostly it was just, he had like a 54-inch chest. He was a big dude. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if you're in the woods and you run into this guy in a Jason mask on a scary road, <laughs> it'd scare the crap out of you. So, so we're, we all show up. First of all, we were like 45 minutes late because everyone wanted to do a beer run, and I didn't put this into the equation so I think my dad probably left you know he probably got scared himself and probably left so uh sure enough we're walking and this one guy you know there's always the tough kid in the crowd he's all like saying uh hey man if somebody jumps out at me I'm gonna stab him I got my knife at the ready I'm like you're not gonna stab anybody I'm sitting there thinking oh man this is a good stab my dad <laughs> <laughs> so uh he's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab him man I'm gonna stab him so Ron the owner says put the knife away you know nobody's gonna jump out at you so we keep walking, and we're walking, and Ron leans over to me and says, where's your dad? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. So he goes, he went home. And I said, yeah, he probably did. So I said, because uh, we're all getting freaked out, so let's turn around and go go back. So we turn around, and just about that time, there's my dad. Well, my dad wore glasses with the Jason mask. He couldn't wear glasses, so he couldn't <laughs> see. And he just bumps into the guy that said he was going to stab the person. Oh, no. So, so funny, that guy's name was Red. He's shaking like Don Knotts. Yeah. <laughs> he's reaching for his knife, but he freezes, and he's just shaking like Don Knotts in a horror movie. And uh, my dad bumps into him and goes, Braw! <laughs> Jason would say, Braw! <laughs> <laughs> and so Red, shaking hand, reaches up and pulls the Jason mask off. He goes, oh, it's Randy's dad. Thank God. <laughs> We're all laughing. It's so funny. Oh, and the weapon of choice. What would you think he would bring if he was going to be Jason? This is the, one of the funniest. Your dad? Yeah. Um, well, he's supposed to bring probably a machete. A machete, maybe a meat cleaver. Yeah, or something, a, a something along butcher knife, those lines. Something. Yeah. He had a hacksaw. <laughs> Why are you going to hold your arm real quick? <laughs> hold on here. Wait. Don't, don't move. Let me get this. That kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so about that time, we're walking back to the car, and we see a whole bunch of cop lights. Oh, no. And we're like, crap. So everyone's throwing their beer because they were all minors. They're throwing their beer in the woods. and Yeah. You know, so we're walking up. Cops have guns drawn. Everybody drop what's in your hands, you know. So, you know, my dad drops his hacksaw and Jason mask. <laughs> <laughs> We're all standing, and they tell us, turn around and face the woods. Don't don't look behind you. So every one of us all on a road turns around and looks behind us. Like, yeah, of course. They're like, turn back around. Oh, great. So we're standing in line, and at Ron's feet are my dad's Jason mask and uh, hacksaw. Mm -hmm. And Ron just starts laughing. He just can't. So I start, and he nudges me, and he points. So I start laughing, and we're because that's when we realized it was a hacksaw. Yeah. And cops were like, "Quit laughing! Quit laughing!" We're like, "Sorry." So we told him the story, and he said, uh, "You hit. You stood out here for how long before they got here?" My dad's like an hour and a half. He goes, "Were you scared?" He goes, "Scared shitless." <laughs> so the cop goes, "You guys aren't into that devil shit, are you?" We're like, "No." He goes, "Okay. Well, funny prank. Go home." But. uh the fact that he showed up and did that was such a funny story. God, did it was great. Did they get called out because someone was reported walking Yeah, someone saw cars parked up wow. <laughs> on this abandoned road. That's awesome. So funny. Not many, da <laughs> not many dads would have would have done that. No, and, uh, that's, oh, yeah. That, he, he put in the time on that one. Oh, yeah. I got, I got one here. This is, um, uh, you ever see, you saw the movie Conan with uh, Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger, yeah. oh, right? Okay. You know how kids are. You go, see, you hear about the movie, you go see a movie, and then everybody wants to be those characters and play that movie. So Star Wars came out, everybody's running around, you know lightsabers and stuff like that and all kinds of crap well Conan came out and um, I had read the comics I was big into the comics my dad said okay I'll go take you to see the movie rated R movie I'm like 11 right. Right? oh yeah there's a lot of nudity Boobs in that too and, oh, yeah. yeah blood flying everywhere and it was great you know, so I was a big fan of that movie and we get home and like lo and behold kids run around the neighborhood with these little swords and this one guy was taking um, I don't know what you call it but it's the stuff that goes in the corners um, when you're building 
Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a little bitty piece of wood that's like, you know, it's rounded on one side and it's got a little pointy little angle on the yeah. other side. Well, the guy was taking those and he was cutting them and he's putting like a little small nail and making like a little cheesy little sword out of them. So kids are running <laughs> around with this. And I'm, I get one, you know, I go over to his house, the guy makes me one, I run around, we're sword fighting left and right, you know, hitting each other and stuff. And, you know, like kids did back in the 70s when people get hurt, whatever, just keep playing, bleed out, you know, go mm-hmm. home when you're done, you know. And uh, I get home and my dad's like, what the hell is that? I'm like, oh, it's a sword. We're playing Conan. He's like, that's not a sword. He's like, I'll make you a sword. <laughs> so next day we go to the equivalent of Home Depot in the 70s or whatever it was. And, Handy uh, Dan, maybe. Handy Dan, Remember yeah. yeah. And he buys like a two by four, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he goes and he cuts his two by four. We, we draw out the sword. He's like, draw me a sword. I'm like, okay, I drew a sword. He's like, ah, it's a crap sword. Let me draw it. And he looked at the you know poster and drew it out made it look real cool and drew it on the wood and then got his lathe and cut it out you know and then sanded it down and did all this work and made this huge freaking sword that i could barely lift right and wrapped like tennis you know leather band around the handle yeah so then i you know get my you know little basically a loincloth the equivalent of a (laughs) loincloth right you know and i run out there with my conan sword my friends are like whoa look at that i'm like yeah it's conan sword he had like you know engraved stuff and it looked really cool (laughs) they're like yeah let's fight and i'm like they're like oh okay so we start fighting i break the shit out of all their swords (laughs) like one strike you truly were conan i was just killing everybody and like beating people down and stuff and you know so all of a sudden my dad gets a knock at the doors mr luna it's like yeah it's like hi i'm dancing down the street and i understand your son's got a stick he's just beating all the kids with it's like uh well yeah it's a sword he's like well i make those swords and um what you made i don't know what that is but that's uh that's not a sword he's like well no that's a sword what you made is not a sword <laughs> right <laughs> so he's like well you know can you tell your kid to stop he's like no <laughs> he's, I made like, it for he's having fun he's having you know just maybe maybe you should make your kids some real swords or something you know? <laughs> so you know as as it happened you know kids would come by the neighborhood and Bring me the wood, I'll make you a sword. So yep. eventually we had a couple of swords. but That's awesome. That was good times, man. <laughs> dads are important. They the really crap are. your dads do to get I you know. in trouble. <laughs> because I think they do that. I mean, I, if I had a boy, I'd probably be doing the same oh, thing. Yeah. Is, I, I know you're going to get in trouble doing this, uh-huh. but I'm going to do it for you because it's going to be hilarious for me to watch right. you get in trouble. <laughs> and see, my dad hated to punish, and we knew that, and so he took advantage of that. But, uh, I mean, don't get, me, don't get me wrong. You pissed him off, and, yeah, you're going to get punished. But uh, I don't even remember what I did. It was so benign what mm. i did but it pissed my mom off and she told my dad to to go in my room and give me a spanking this mm. was back in the spanking days when that was legal yeah so my dad comes he, i heard him arguing with her but my mom put her foot down and you know you got to keep mom happy so mm. he comes in the bedroom shuts the door and he's yelling at me but i'm not buying it i could tell there's something weird my dad didn't yell this way so yeah he slams the door and he whispers to me he says you better scream loud and don't tell your mom. So he <laughs> smacks the bed. Bam. Yeah. Oh, bam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was awesome. But uh, you know, my dad's hands were like freaking cantaloupes. He had huge hands. And uh, I mean, I, I, he used to break bed slats with his one hand. He could break a bed slat in half with wow. one hand. Yeah. I saw him do it numerous times. And uh, so when he hit that bed, it sounded like, you know, hell was coming you know to to earth or whatever on your butt yeah, yeah. and uh so <laughs> my mom comes in there running in there she's like you didn't have to spank him that hard <laughs> like it's okay it's okay i just you know, i'm a good actor you know i'm pretending yeah. you know oh, it's okay <laughs> that's great but one time I did do so i did do something bad i deserved to spank it on this one and my dad gave me a choice he'd never given me a choice before he goes, i tell you what, you can get three licks with the belt, two licks with the paddle, or one lick with my hand. Mm-hmm. So I've had the belt, or I've had the belt, don't like that. I've had the paddle, I really don't like that. What's the hand going to do? Oh, jeez. So he winds up, he hits my butt so hard, I thought my teeth were going to fall out. <laughs> like, Holy crap, I'll take the belt next time. <laughs> yeah, I'd forgotten how strong my dad's hands were. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah I mean, my and, dad, uh, <clears throat> my dad was real big into. I think most dads are though. Bill real big into grilling mm-hmm. uh, growing up, and and that was his. You know, that was where you went to worship in the on the weekends. You mm-hmm. go to church, and then you go out in the backyard and you worship at the grill, and you yeah. make your steaks and stuff. Right. And, you know, so he had just gotten this really nice Weber grill, beautiful red Weber grill. It was you know, every, you know, when you get that in the neighborhood, everybody's like, mm-hmm. oh, we got we got the Weber. Who's go see yeah. it? And everybody's like, oh, let's go see the grill. <laughs> so everybody's over. We're seeing the grill, having a good old time. You know, people over there barbecuing whole th- whole nine. 
it was like a whole weekend of fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, at this point, I was kind of a pyro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, weren't we all as yeah. teenagers? So I was like just finding, what can I burn in that thing? So yeah. I would just open the grill and throw stuff in there and burn it up, you know? Yeah. I didn't think anything of it. I was like, eh, I'll just, you know, I'll take the scrappings and throw it right. away. And not, yeah. Nothing will happen. And right. I'll never find out. Right. You know, because they went and did something. They went and played tennis or whatever. I'm at the house by myself. So then I thought, you know, I was like, well, you know, I got these toys. I'm not really playing with those anymore. I'll just mm. melt them. You know, so I stuck yeah. them on the grill, set let, set a fire, oh, and no. put them on the grill, on the actual oh, you grill. you idiot. And melted like these, so that's you know, Hulk. Caked on the. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it wouldn't come off of there. It dried <laughs> on there. I was like, Oh Uh-oh. crap! You know, I'm like freaking out. I'm trying to scrape it off. It wouldn't come off. I'm like, oh crap! It's like, oh no, I'm gonna get in trouble. So I like took the thing and like threw it over the fence. <laughs> Comes over the next weekend to go grill. He's like, where's the where's, where's the, the grill? grill? Like, where's it? Just the thing here. What what the hell is this? He's like looking in there. It's like melted plastic all on the inside. And he's like, you know, <laughs> Brendan J. You get the middle name scream. Oh, yeah. you, know? you get the middle name. You're in deep. Duty. Yeah, you're in deep shit at that oh, point. Yeah. yeah, but. uh yeah, my dad was so funny. We knew we could beat him down. It was very Homer Simpson like, you know, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Mm. And uh, you knew after about five times, we'd be like, go, you know, just do it, you know. Try that with my mom. You'd get spanked for <laughs> doing, for berating, or, you know, uh, what's the word? Pro- probing her or whatever. Yeah. But uh, anyway, prodding. Prodding, that's it. Yeah. Good smoke. Yeah, very good smoke. I'm liking it, man. Um, I'm at about the second third. Mm-hmm. I'm almost there. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and take another break, and we'll be right back with the uh, last third of the Perdomo ESV. All right, everybody. We're back with the last third of the Perdomo ESV here at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. And if you were wanting to purchase some of these cigars... How would you go about doing that, Randy? You could call 972-761-9903. Excellent. And I would recommend doing so. This is a great cigar. Yeah. Can you get those um, little little sample packs? Can you get those on the phone? Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's a great deal. It comes in Sun Grown and Maduro. Yes, Sorry. it does. I was swallowing a hiccup right then. <laughs> Maduro and Sun Grown. Yes. Mm. And uh, they're very good. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I'm liking it better this time around than the first time. And I liked it the first time, but like I said, I wasn't paying attention to it when I smoked it. Yeah. Now that I am, it's really good. I think the first time I smoked this, I probably had a couple cigars already that day. Mm-hmm. So I missed a lot of the nuances. And this has a lot going on. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say, I mean, it is. it has it's changed. It's complex. It's complex. It has changed already but, yeah. from the first and the second, third. Um, but it's not um, a severe complexity. Yeah, you got to pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. You pay attention subtle, to it. You very get the retro hail. It is, there's some subtle differences, yeah. Yep. Very nice. So did your dad smoke cigars at all or <clears throat> cigarettes or anything? Well, I told you that one story about where he was given one, maybe a neighbor that's had right, a baby. That's right, yeah. yeah. But for those who haven't heard it, real quickly, uh, it was a Saturday night back in the 70s when there wasn't anything to do because there were only like four TV channels. Mm-hmm. And uh, a friend had given my dad a cigar. This is what we were going to do was sit around and watch my dad light this cigar or smoke the cigar. And he bit off the end and smoked it. And I don't think he finished it. But that whole process intrigued me so much that, like, if I'd get a hot dog out of the refrigerator, I'd bite the end off of it, spit it out, pretend like I was smoking a cigar. Yeah, kind of fun. Uh, when I got into cigars in the late, yeah. like walking around with like ninety six, ninety. Yeah, no. As I said, Freud would have a field day with that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, sometimes a hot dog is just a hot, just dog. A hot dog. That's right. <laughs> sometimes a hot dog is a cigar. That's right. Ooh, <laughs> now that's profound. That's profound. Wish I'd have thought of that. But uh, I think I. I think I got him to try one in like 96, 97, right when I first started. Because yeah. I told him that story, asked him if he remembered. And I think he told me he'd had a couple since then, but I, I never saw him smoke them. Uh, and I think he smoked a little bit of the one with me. But nah. My dad my dad did it socially. He didn't socially. drink or smoke. Yeah, my dad did it socially. He, um, I'd see him smoke cigars every once in a while if he was with certain friends. And he, did, he was in sales, so there's those guys in sales yeah. that, you know, they sit around, smoke cigars, and laugh a whole lot. And yeah. He did that with those guys, but I don't think – it wasn't ever – he never had a humidor. He never had – my grandfather smoked cigars more. Mm-hmm. I remember him smoking cigars more when I was a kid than my dad ever yeah. did. But he always smoked the real, you know, the Thin Lanceros and the little, uh-huh. you know, stuff that you'd buy – over he'd walk he'd go over to Mexico and yeah. just get whatever was there you know cheapy little things mm-hmm. so so what uh, you mentioned movies and I didn't get to talk about movies in that last segment because mm-hmm. I told my wonderful Holloman Road story <laughs> which is still a it's our family there, stable we love that there, story man. Yeah, we should probably get funny. the history of that place <laughs> and write a story about that should we really yeah. should but uh, my dad big in westerns uh, 
big in war movies, and that's one thing that I didn't get from my dad. Mm-hmm. I think I got bored with the war movies, and then as I got older and realized the devastation of war, mm-hmm. you know, it, they just don't impress me. Yeah, I mean, I think they're well made. I mean, Apocalypse Now, how can you not like that? Uh, Saving Private Ryan. And as I was saying off mic, as I was saying off mic, my dad died a few months before Saving Private Ryan came out. Mm. And he would have loved that movie. I remember watching and thinking, my dad would have loved this movie. But I remember in the 70s, we went to see Midway. Mm. And this is right when, like, Dolby surround sound had first came out. Yeah. Our ears were blown away. I mean, I watched the whole movie with my hands over my ears, and that still wasn't working. <laughs> it was just so loud. Yeah. But uh, he loved John Wayne, loved John Wayne. And my dad was a CB in the Navy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Construction Battalion is what that stands for. But uh, in the movie, John Wayne, the fighting CBs, my dad had to love that movie because here he's playing a CB and everything. So, mm-hmm. uh, And so that's where my love of Western started. Uh, he was a huge James Bond fan. I mean, that was a must opening night we would go to see any james bond movie yeah we did too and uh even though he didn't like roger moore as much as sean connery he did like roger moore and uh they were fun and and i just loved sitting around watching movies with him and, and one of my fun my favorite moments of watching a movie with my dad my mom and dad had just uh, separated they're getting ready to get divorced sorry i have to cough <clears throat> and uh we went over to his apartment for the first night that we were going to hang out at his apartment <laughs> I remember he bought a big family-sized can of Chef Boyardee spaghetti and meatballs. Wow. And got uh, some dinner rolls. And we ate spaghetti and ate dinner rolls and watched Death Hunt with Charles Bronson and Lee Marvin. Have you ever seen that movie? I don't think so. Uh, uh, Lee Marvin's a Canadian Mountie, and uh, Bronson uh, killed somebody because of a dog. Got a dog fight, and he got pissed, so he took the dog. The guys come to take the dog back from him. He kills him. So now... Canadian Mounties are going after him, and it's all going through the snow. It's almost Rambo-esque, only it's in the woods in the snow, and it's you know it came out a year or two before Rambo. Okay. And Rambo even stole something from this movie. But, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. What was that? Right, so, you know the scene in Rambo where he jumps off from the high cliff yeah, and yeah, he yeah. lets the trees break his fall? They do that in Death Hunt. Oh, really? And that came out a couple of years before. Ah. But uh, great movie, and it was just a good night, just hanging out with our dad. He wasn't sad over the divorce anymore, and he was like, glad that his boys were there, and then Afterwards, we watched a Mavericks game, and they won. But I'll always remember that first night at my dad's new place, watching Death Hunt. And if you haven't seen it, watch it. I've got it on DVD. I'll loan it to you. Yeah, I'll have to seek that out. Uh, Very my good dad, movie. My dad liked the, the Westerns a lot, too. He was a big John Wayne fan. He liked uh, Jimmy Stewart. I think mm-hmm. he probably liked Jimmy Stewart uh, a little bit more, just because he was more of an everyman. Right. Um, and then he also was a big fan of Audie Murphy, which was a real yeah, war hero war that hero, yeah. ended up doing movies. Absolutely. And uh, my dad was ex-military, so I think that kind of spoke to him. Yeah, there. my dad loved Audie Murphy too, as yeah. well. So um, I remember watching a lot of those with him. And uh, one of the cool things that they did back in the 70s uh, slash 80s that I don't really think they do much anymore. I've seen it at like a couple places, but they used to show um, older movies at mm-hmm. the college so yeah. he would go you know he'd take me to the college they'd have an auditorium and they would show film mm-hmm. movies yeah and that's like where i saw you know um west side story and uh you know a lot of older uh-huh. you know they I've weren't got, first run very movies similar story yeah. Go ahead. yeah so we'd go see all these old westerns and stuff over there and uh that was just a it was a great time mm-hmm. saw once upon a time in the west um yeah, another one of my Good dad's favorites. Ugly, you another know. one of my dad's favorites. Yep. And it was just great, you know. But this is back in the day when you didn't have, and you had HBO, but not many people had it. Um, yeah, remember when it was just a box? It yeah. wasn't even cable. It was any, wasn't even tied to your cable. It was just a box that they'd hook up to your TV, and you could watch HBO. Yeah, yeah. you remember back before before they even had remotes with it? It was yeah. a slide bar thing. Yep. You have to slide the bar, yep. and you're like, yep. oh, I don't have all these forty channels. Let's go to this one. And right. you know. well, HBO was a little high toned for our family. We had on TV. Do you remember that? Yeah, on TV. That was the low end, but yeah, we still got to see movies on it. Yep. Well, my dad was in the Navy, as I said, and uh, he served active for four years, and then I think he was eight or nine years a reserve. And on the reserve, you know, you have to do two weeks active every every year. And the first week, families weren't allowed, but the second week, they were. And so we take a Greyhound bus, my mom and my two brothers, to to Biloxi, and uh, go on base, and they would have movie night. And I remember, I'm like six or seven years old. And we got to go in the mess hall and eat with our dad, which was cool, watching people walk around on machine guns and their fatigues and everything. It just looked really cool. And so we got a movie night, and it was Fiddler on the Roof. And I, you know, seven, I never heard of this. And it's a movie you th- would think a seven-year-old would be bored out of his mind, you know, old Jewish and Russian immigrants and 
songs and all that kind of crap. Loved it. And I think that's where I fell in love with musicals was watching Fiddler on the Roof on the Navy base in Biloxi, Mississippi. Very funny. Cool. But my dad was a big Bronson fan, and I think that's where I've become a big Charles Bronson fan. I understand what the movies are. They're just throwaway violent action movies, but they're fun. And Bronson was a badass, and so I've always liked Charles Bronson movies because of my dad. Yep. I can see that. My dad was a big Charles Bronson fan, too. It was, yeah. you know, Death Wish, one, two, three, four, yeah. million, five, whatever. <laughs> he was a big Lee Marvin fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, big Red One is a good is an underrated military movie. It is, Because yeah. it came out right about the same time Apocalypse Now did, and I think everyone was blown away by Apocalypse Now more so than Big Red One, but I liked the Big Red One better. Is that the one with Mark Hamill? Maybe. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, and then, oh, what's the one with Harrison Ford? Uh, Hanover Street. No. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was crap. The Frisco Kid. No, that was a terrible movie, too. Uh, I think he was in the sequel to The Guns of Navarone. Force 10 from Navarone? Yeah, he was in Force 10 from Navarone. Yeah, yeah, he was in that one. And uh, those were good movies, and yeah. I loved watching those Lee, with my dad. Lee Marvin and Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Big Red One. Yeah, it's got a 7.3 on IMDb. That's pretty solid. Robert Carradine's in it. Yeah. Um, got a bunch of people. Yeah, I remember liking that movie a lot, too. That just, you know, it wasn't as edgy. No. It was a Samuel Fuller movie, which right. he did a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. really good high-class movies, but it wasn't, you know, the edgy 70s movie that Apocalypse Now was. And I remember my dad not liking Apocalypse Now because he's like, you know, he was in the war, and he's yeah. like, that shit never happened. They didn't right. bring, you know, cart girls out there and have a big party. That's a right. bunch of bullshit. You wish. Just, you know. <laughs> they would have liked to yeah. have had that happen. Yeah, so he, you know, I think that kind of offended him. And he didn't not like the movie. He just, you know, he's like, that's just total Hollywood. But he liked a lot of the, you know, the mm-hmm. whole music flying in with the helicopters yeah. blowing shit up. That was cool, you know. But yeah, that's very cool. And then, uh, oh, I forgot my thought. You're gonna have to edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not editing. It's crap. Welcome to old age. It was, uh, darn it. It was a war movie, and I was gonna. Oh, I remember when Forrest Gump came out, mm-hmm. and I didn't see it with my dad. I went. I saw it on a date. That was a weird date. I have to tell that story one day when we're talking about Forrest Gump. Okay. But. Uh, I uh, I remember just being blown away by the war scenes in Forrest Gump yeah. and uh, how realistic it looked. So I told my dad about it, and so he went to see it, and he called me. He was like, you're right, that's one of the most realistic war scenes he'd ever seen. He loved the movie mainly because of how great that war scene was. Yeah. And uh, Lieutenant Dan, you know, that stuff. Mm-hmm. I gotta that's say, Ma- Bubba. That's my Bubba. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's a good movie. Yeah, that's very good, good movie. movie. It's an excellent movie. We'll have to bring that up when we do our, you know, our top ten must-see list or something on movies or yeah whatever. Forrest yeah. Gump's good stuff yeah. yeah and that's one of those movies too that I mean I, I think it was PG-13 but it had a lot of I wouldn't I would really almost classify that as an R because of the hard subject matter on a lot of the stuff yeah. you know Yeah. but we used to show that at Blockbuster and I'm mm-hmm. like really like yeah. there's nudity in that and <laughs> but there's it had such an innocence about it too it, it, even well, though it was very ca- edgy well, his character was in, so his innocent, innocent it was yeah. like he was the innocent core and everything around him was just destruction yeah. and horribleness yeah. you know it was just yeah. a, but I was impressed that I picked up on what a great war scene it was, and my dad, who was this war movie expert, loved that scene as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yep. So we are coming to the end of the Perdomo ESV. What do you think? I will smoke another one within the next week. Yeah, that's yummy. Especially in that price point. It's not bad. Yeah, very good cigar. Yummy. So um, We have mentioned that you can find us on Podomatic, yep. iTunes, Spreaker, Slam Internet Radio, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, we're there occasionally. Yeah. We're the and, first uh, nine episodes at least. Uh, Spreaker and go online and uh, go to Facebook and like us. And we, we've got a new deal we're going to start doing. Anyone who comments on any any of those forums gives us a good comment anyway. Uh, <laughs> we're going to give you a shout out. We're going to start giving shout outs to people that give uh, that give us comments. Yeah, for sure. And it's oh, as always. Oh, and we got a great to... we got a great review on iTunes. I loved that review. This is the best review I've ever seen, and it's the exact review I wanted. Mm-hmm. And no, we didn't do it and hire someone to do this. This was someone we do not know this person at all. Yep. He said, this is the podcast you should listen to because it feels like you're sitting there and smoking with these guys. And that, that's exactly what we talked about before we started doing this show was that's what we wanted it to feel like. Yep. And hopefully many of you are getting that same feeling because that was our intention. Yep. And we appreciate it. Considering we got listeners all over the globe, I think that's um, probably a safe bet. Yeah. And uh, if it's, you know, if there's any uh, troops out there to listen to us, um, overseas or station places um definitely want to thank you for your service and uh, absolutely as always check out cigarsforwarriors.net they do a lot of good for the uh, the warriors that are out there yep. you can donate cigars to them and uh, check out cats as well 
on Facebook. They're an invite only group, um, but they do a lot of good with the Cigars for Warriors as well. So check out Facebook, um, it's Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge. Shop and Lounge, yeah. And uh, the podcasts are always there in the uh, YouTube format. You can also yep. go to YouTube, um, comment on iTunes, give us reviews there on YouTube. We would love it. Yep. Let us know what we're doing. And if you have any cigars you want us to review, and uh, if it's something we don't carry, send them our way and we'll, we'll review we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to review it. Why not? So, Absolutely. As always, it's been great smoking with you. Have a good night, Brandon. You too.